Okay, good afternoon everybody. We'll start with the broadcast section and that will be Paul Gilmore for Sky Sports News. Paul. Thank you. Hi, Hi Paul. Have you any fresh injury concerns or any, uh, any players returning from injury? No, no, we're all good, as we were. You said after the Arsenal game you alluded to the fact, especially first half, you said the players do care but they'll be too nice to play against. Have you addressed that on the, on the training pitch this week? What have you seen on the training pitch this week? Um, addressed up the training pitch I think you know it's uh, well firstly to be clear I think when, when I said the players care I, I know they do because this is a I've been a player and a coach now a long time and <coughs> players all care they've all got their reasons to care the reality is the action that comes from that you know and sometimes there can be many reasons why it brings maybe an, an underperformance or <coughs> you know not so great results so I don't think that's something that's like a training pitch issue as such, of course, that's uh, working with the players as a group and individually um, to try and make sure that everyone's on point and of course then you work on the training pitch but since Arsenal it's been pretty much recovery and small prep this morning to play so there's not there's not the turnaround and chance to deal with some of the these issues which are more sort of fundamental issues I guess. Todd Bully said this week that he, he's determined to, to fix everything, get it right. What did you make of the comments? Can you have any sort of input given your standing at the club, your understanding of, of this club, and can you help him with that process? No, it's, I think it's a good thing. It's uh, you know to to speak so positively. It's what I've found since I've been here. Um, good intentions where the, the club's going to be taken. So um, that's that's good. And then from my point of view, um, I don't know. You know, I'm here in this period. I'm working with the squad at the minute to try and get some form of turnaround in terms of. Feeling, performance, and then results. And um, other than that, I think it's uh, obviously he's the uh, the owners of the club to take those bigger decisions. What have you been told about the managerial situation? Any update there? Any information? No, nothing. No. What's your vision kind of for Chelsea next season? Like, if, if you could sort of sum up in just what needs to improve exactly to, to get the. Club it's not. Back. That's not for me to talk about now. You know, I'm here till the end of the season, so I don't think my vision now. At this point is is you know, not worthy, but do you know what I mean? It's not the it's not the it's not for me to answer at this point. I was just going to ask you about um, Emil Paddy Shield. He mm -hmm. was earning a lot of plaudits earlier in the season for his performances. Uh, what, what have you seen with him on the training pitch? And is, is he close to kind of coming? Yeah, back yeah, into the fold? very close because um, he couldn't play in the Champions League for me. Um, he played against Brighton, which is a difficult match probably for everybody. And of course, he's close, you know, and in competition with, with Thiago and Wesley and Trevor in that area of the pitch, he's very close. He's, he's training well, and I think he's come here as, as a lot of players have come from a different league at a youngish age into the Premier League. I think it's understandable to have moments of, of maybe game time, maybe moments of not, and you're to a degree a developing player, but probably more just finding your feet in this league as young players. So I think that's one of the things that we find in this season is. In a normal case, maybe a club like Chelsea or others, these sort of players come in amongst big stability in the squad and the team and have them at time and can find it. And at the moment, that's not quite the case. So I, I think to give credit to those players themselves, that's not easy to take some of that responsibility on their shoulders. But what they are all doing is trying to work and keep going. And, and I'm here and we're here as staff to support that. Thank you. Paul Pell P. Frank, what have you made of the job Gary O'Neill has done at Bournemouth? Having been most people's favourites for going straight back down. Yeah, he's done a great job, uh, full credit to him. I don't know any of the details of it behind the scenes, but he's obviously done a lot of good work there. And um, what, what he's created is a is a team with high energy, high quality, good feeling around the whole club, feeling of togetherness, it seems, from the outside. And um, yeah, considering where he came in, I think he's done a really good job and uh, he's getting the credit I think he rightfully deserves. So about Dominic Solanke, what do you remember training with him? Um, I remember training with him, he was a young man coming in to train with the uh, first team at the time, so he was in and out, but clearly a high talent. Um, and I know that from my links with the academy and the coaches there, that would speak a lot about their high regard for him. And um, sometimes different players take different routes, and he's taken his route, and um, now it's good to see him performing, because he's still young, because he's talked about a lot as a young man, um, to see him performing so well. Um, and he's a big threat and a very good player for them so I'm pleased for him on an, on an individual note because he has his origins here at the club um, but he's 
that what might have seen a difficult path sometimes at the minute he's performing really well. He's had moments where he's been prolific, particularly last year in the championship. How much do you see him as a, a proper all round striker now? I think that's exactly what he is and he's showing it and that's uh, what you want in a modern day number nine um, all round which means you of course have to get your goals and assists but also I think that one of Dominic's big things has always been his work ethic on and off the ball so if you want to press on the front you need people that can put in that energy and effort and you know the capacity to do it but also have an understanding of what it is and I think Dominic's had that Probably been well trained in this academy, to be fair, but individually, I think full credit to him. And just one on you, you've had this remarkable career. You've got a family, you've got presumably lots of opportunities that come your way. What, where do you still get the hunger from to manage when it doesn't look much fun from the outside? I know, you should probably go and ask every Premier League manager that same question. You know what I mean? It's, it's what we do. So, um, I'm, I'm fortunate maybe with the, the family and you know the career behind me but you know I'm 44 years of age I'm just working like you're working is your, is your job a delight every day or you might not <laughs> Thanks, I might Paul. get home later. <laughs> <laughs> Not from work. <laughs> Talk sport at the back, Bradley. Hi, Frank. Hi. Um, hope you're well. Um, as a club legend and someone who obviously knows his club so well, how much are you hurting about the current situation right now and what people are saying about Chelsea as a club, but also, I suppose, your managerial record as well? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not hurting because... Um, I, I don't know why it might be me, but I've been part of this club through big success. So, you know, when you see uh, the highs and lows that sport, any sport, can give you moments of adversity. I think we, we at Chelsea have been pretty fortunate for 20 years. Um, and I think, you know, when the spotlight is on you, it's on you. And you, as a, as a professional player, coach, um, you have to understand and handle that because every other team will have their moments of these periods. And even as a fan base, I think you have to... Yeah, you can be frustrated, you want more, whatever, but I also think, you know, you can be very uh, understanding of what's been in the last 20 years at Chelsea Football Club. So, I'm not, um, it's, it's not one to, to, for me personally to sit on and feel hurt by too much, more as in, what's the action that's going to get us out of it? Now, the action this season is not going to get us in the Champions League, it's not going to get us maybe in the top eight or whatever. Who knows what it might get, but it'll be like the first small step and you have to consider it in that in that um, period and of course maybe not all fans want to hear that but as I say it's a reality which I've come back into so it's not um, it's just something that we have to work at to, to be back and this has been the season of the interim manager in the Premier League got Sam Allardyce back at Leeds this week do, do you feel like interim managers can still have the same impact at a club that we've seen at a club like Chelsea in the past or would you feel like players need more stability or long term thinking now I, I think every season every situation is different you know, I'm the, the third manager, maybe fourth, but you know, Bruno did one game. But that's so you can see from the, probably from that that it's been a tough season all round, and every situation is different. And, and it's a new situation for me because all my jobs have been permanent before. The last time I came to Chelsea, there was a lot of upheaval, but we had a big, long pre-season to work with a squad and put it together. And you could see the benefits from that as that year went on. And this job's just different. So I think it might be more common in the modern day because of the the um, the pressures of the big business of modern football in the Premier League. Um, and that's it. And lastly for me, you mentioned the fans earlier on. And for those who are maybe listening to us on the TV or the radio or reading it in the newspapers, what would your message be to Chelsea fans going into the last five or six games of the season? Oh, you know, to... Um, well, they will stick with the team. I don't really have to tell them much more than that. I think you see that with Chelsea fans at the, the end of the Arsenal game. You know, the club has gone from when I first joined to a really big football club to a, to a monster of a football club worldwide. So the fan base goes much wider than that. And as I say, it's had a lot of success. But all we can say in this period, everybody from the outside wants to say there's not much on it. But myself and for the players, we have to show an immense amount of pride in what we do in these games. Because as I say, it's the first step into the future. Now... Will, will we need a, a reboot of, sen of some sense in the summer? Sure, you know, that's clear because we're not where we want to be. Um, 
but at the moment we have to do what's right in front of us and the fans can be sure from my point of view that I'll be pushing for that and then I hope they can see the rewards of that whatever they are. That's great. Best of luck tomorrow. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Last question in the broadcast section today. Alex how BBC. Okay. Uh, things are, are tough at the moment. You said you, you've seen things you don't usually see from a, from a Chelsea team. Are you feeding back to those higher up in, in the club about things that, about players or, or difficulties you're seeing on day-to-day -day or on match days? Yeah, I've got communication about everything that's going on because that's part of my role, as I say. As much as we're in a results business in this period, it's looking to how this can not be the same next season. So, of course, my views, having worked here before, having worked with the club, having an understanding of the club, a lot of the stuff, the squad, you know, I think my opinion can be valid and I'll, 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 I can express that um, as I go, yeah. Does it uh, frustrate you that maybe performances and results are having a, an effect on you as a, as a manager? I come to the territory, you know, I think you, if you manage, this is my, I've had three permanent jobs and this is my fourth as such. And I think probably everybody understands the difficulty of the situation that I've come into. I certainly understood it coming in, especially in those first two or three weeks where we played five games, two against Real Madrid and, and these things without much time to, to really lay much down. Um, you have to accept that as a consequence of the job and um, as much as you have your great moments where you know everything feels easy um, you have your moments where they're not so um, but I'm you know that's part of it. So is it a case that the stats don't tell the, the full picture? Well I don't know if you want to like, list our last four Premier League games no um, they're not good right? but that is the full picture <laughs> do you know what I mean so that's I think something this season is a reality their league position is a reality you know our points are a reality our goal scored is a reality of the season so I think you know that's obviously a, we've had three managers four managers for the season so I think there's a reality with the club of where it's at um, but that's not my job to focus too much on that or to, to think about what um, stats would be produced from the outside because that's commonplace in the modern world in football you can make any stat be in the moment and as a, as a coach and as a player the biggest thing is your next game your next step Thank you. End of that section. Cameras off, please.